Hi guys, it's Susie. Um, here we are, Saturday the 21st, and many things, many things are happening that are very, very prophetic, prophetic, and we all have that hope that we're holding on to, right? Our blessed hope. The, um, the change that came about in Israel just a few days ago brought them to be so, all the Israel's, uh, the, the nation of Israel has returned back to the way they've been given back their biblical rights to Israel. And you know what? Praise the Lord always in all things. And we know that it also is pointing to more Bible prophecy that will be fulfilled. And those of you who don't understand what it means about Bible prophecy, also known as the study of eschatology, studying what the Word of God says about these days, these end days that we are living in as the final generation. Since Israel became a nation, that was when the time started click ticking for the final generation. So um, the final generation, by reason of, uh, it would be 70 years, but by reason of strength, 80 years. Well, it's been 70 years since Israel became a nation. And if you count the time of the tribulation, we'd be going on 80, whenever that may begin. If, assuming, the rapture happens any time now. So when the rapture occurs, sometime after that, the tribulation period begins. Um, and maybe that'll hit even 80 years. Maybe we, we don't know. But what I want to just share with you is that the love of God is still prevailing. We're, we're facing a lot of demonic powers of darkness that are trying to defeat the power of the light. We, born-again believers, are the light of the world. And we have to continue shining that light. When those powers, those evil forces come up against us with, with um, their demonic behavior that you know people are, are willing vessel either for the power of God to be used in them or the power of the God of this world Satan and his demons he'll, he'll send demon spirits into people and possess them in these last days every I mean it's always been around you know if you're not serving surrendering to Jesus Christ then you're very susceptible and prone for those demons to come into you by you opening doors unaware that you're not even aware that you're doing. Whenever you allow yourself to participate in certain behaviors that are pleasing to the devil, Satan, you're opening doors you shouldn't open. You're living a sinful behavior of living by your own free will, thinking you're free to do whatever you want. Well, guess what? You're losing your freedom when you do that because you're putting yourself in bondage to that sin because Satan then has a hold on you as soon as he gets his way with you. So you can be walking around for years with demon, demon possession in you with this behavior you can't seem to control. Wow, I did not know I was going to go there. I was going to talk about this egg and demonstrate something here that just came to me and I said holy Lord just lead me to what you want said maybe we'll get to that still but yes you have to be very very alert to what is going on in the world we do the Bible says we do we fight against these demon spirits we fight not against flesh and blood but about, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness and in high places powers in high places and these demon spirits, the devil sends them anywhere he wishes. And he seeks whom he may devour. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he uses whatever evil sources he can get his, gets to work for him. So if you don't have your full armor of God on, the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, to protect you from these evil demonic spirits, they have, they have free access to you when you... Because you're living in sin. When you surrender to Jesus, though, you have that, you have that, that hand, not today, Satan, you have, you have that protection all around you, the hedge of protection all around you of angels protecting you. Once you're born again, you've surrendered your life to Jesus. And God will set you free from those sins and the bondage and demon spirits will flee. 
that you 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 can't have Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit living in you, and demon spirits. No, no, no. It's not possible. Those demon spirits, when you surrender, you plea the blood of Jesus over your life, and you surrender your heart and your life to Jesus Christ, you are saved. You are born again. You are washed clean as white as snow. And no demon power has any. The devil has no power over you any longer. So until you realize that you are truly susceptible and, and, and vulnerable to the devil using you as a, as a willing vessel living in sin, you're serving the God of this world, Satan, and you are not saved from these demonic spirits. You are not saved from Satan taking you to hell for all of eternity. You are his. You belong to the devil until you get born again, as Jesus said. Jesus said in John 3, verse 3, Verily, verily, that means he really means it. Verily, verily, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Demon spirits and sin go hand in hand, and you, they are not, no way, ever going to make it into heaven. That's why you cannot understand the truth until you have your eyes opened and your ears free to receive the truth. And the only way to receive the truth is when you surrender, you, for you're sick and tired of the sinful nature in this world that you've been living in. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired of the bondage that the sinful beast in you has over you. You're sick and tired of, of just one, one rut on a day after another living in this horrible bondage of sin that never brings joy to you, never brings peace to you, never brings truth to you. It's filled with lies and evil and dark days and lots of laziness and sleep and tired and weariness and uh, sadness, depression, oppression. You're filled to the brim. You've had it with those sinful behaviors holding you in the chains of sin, the bondage of sin. Those chains will be loosed in the name of Jesus when you surrender your heart and your life over to Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. So Satan no longer has anything to say about you. He has to answer to Jesus. Sin will no longer have dominion over you. Sin will no longer rule in your life, for you will be free and free indeed. The truth will set you free and you will, you will be free. Now Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You must understand, if you don't know Jesus yet, you must understand that the devil is doing everything he can. Any chance you even think on Jesus and look to something about Jesus, he's right there at you. He's right there getting in your face, whispering those those things that tempt you to stay in sin and keep on focusing on the things you love of this world. But Jesus said, Love not the world, nor the things of the world. For if you love the things of this world, this world and the things of this world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Hold on, my eggs are boiling. One second. Sorry, I think I overcooked my eggs. They're just going in a tuna salad, so hopefully they'll be okay. No, the love of the Father is not in you, and the devil does not want the love of the Father in you. As long as he can have his way with you, he's going to continue to tempt you to stay in your sins. He's going to keep luring you to go this way and that way. Like I told you in my last video, um, you should go see that last video. It's pretty good. The Lord speaks through me when, I, when I'm obedient. And like right now, I, I just started with this, this egg thing. And I said, Lord, speak to me, whatever you want said. I don't know if this is going to play a part in it or not, but I hope so. Um, but the Lord wants you to be alert to these to these evil powers of darkness. He wants you to come out of the darkness and into the light. Jesus is calling you. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I can attest to that myself. He made a huge change in me. I was thinking I was saved. Maybe I wasn't. I'm, I, I know I professed when I was a little girl and got born again, 
saved, but then I lived, you know, growing up as an adult without the experience of what it's like to be saved by, by people who read the Bible and understood the truth. So I really, you know, always thought I was a good person and, and I, you know, was nice to people, but there was a side to me that did what everybody else was doing, thinking it's okay, I'm still a nice person, I can get by, you know, I'm, you know, and I just put things under the rug that felt like I was doing something wrong, and I'm like, oops, you know, whatever, but there was no repenting, there was no looking to Jesus and um, crying out to him until one day, I got born again again. I called on the Lord when I was in a great sorrowing state of mind of depression over what these changes are that are going on in the world that were very frightening to me and um, to make it a long story short is I finally surrendered my entire life everything that was concerning me I begged him please tell me what the truth is I, I this is I can't take this anymore I don't, I don't know what to do and I, I give it all to you I surrender all these troubles to you Lord and my heart my weariness and my sadness and my tears that were sobbing it just all fell away it was over within a few days because he showed me the answers to everything I was seeking. And it didn't take long at all for me to just get it. And then I jumped for joy. And then from then on, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I cried out again. I, I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost in me. And Jesus Christ now truly leads me every single day of my life. I truly put my faith and my trust in Him. And He is my Lord and Savior. And I am not any longer of this world or looking after the things in this world or, or pleasing man. I don't care what man thinks of me. I'm not worried about the things of the world. Jesus said, trust me and, and, and look to me and fear not for I am with you always. And when we trust in Jesus, He blesses us and and if there's just nothing the devil can do to take that away. No one can snatch Jesus away from me and me away from Jesus. The two of us are one in Christ and the body of Christ. We're all one in Christ. Jesus says to you, come, come to me and I will give you rest. Here we go. Here's the egg part. He says, take my yoke upon you for my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All your troubles, all your cares, you can cast away. You can just say, get out of here, devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. And Jesus, I surrender it all to you. I surrender. Get on your knees. Lift your hands up to heaven. Feel the wonderfulness of what it is. It, it's a releasing. It, it's like people have, if you've never surrendered to Jesus in that way, by lifting your hands up to him and glorifying him, not fearing what people think all around you, like, you know, you do it in private, but, um, you know, if you grew up in a, in religion, which is dead, there's no life in religion, it's because it's not the way, the truth, and the life to heaven, then you're walking, and you, you're not used to seeing the real way to worship the Lord. He wants us to show how joyful we are and we feel inside. He just wants us to be free. When you surrender to Jesus, you are free in Christ. So please, give it all to Jesus. Surrender it all to Jesus and he'll let you be free to express your love to him through singing and praising and clapping and lifting up your hands to heaven. And don't forget the world. Don't, don't worry about what's going on around you in the world. I mean, you want to be discreet about it in your own home or whatever it is you're doing, and uh, you don't you don't want to scare people away from believing in Jesus by acting crazy in public. But then again, if the Holy Spirit's in charge, He'll take care of all those people around you as well. So you let the Lord lead you. You let the the Spirit of God live and reign inside of you through the power of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. I'm over doing this long message again. Here's what I wanted to show you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know stringing along with this egg thing. I was just boiling some eggs. I took some out and I remember teaching and showing my grandkids this one. I've got a raw egg in my hand and I'll show you. And here's an empty bowl. This is a raw egg and I'm squeezing it with all my might. I'm squeezing it and squeezing it. See if you can see. I'm squeezing and squeezing. I don't know if it shows in my arms. I'm squeezing and I did not just switch it. I should have. There's, there's nothing, nothing I'm switching. This is not magic. Magic is... Ooh bad, evil. Magic, magic is something you should always stay away from. 
magic is of the devil, the god of this world, Satan, is using great ways to deceive people through magic. They call it magic. And the devil does do things that look like it's magic. Well, it is. It's witchcraft is what it's called. In all kinds of forms. This is not magic. This is the power of God. This egg, as delicate as it is, if I were to just drop it into this bowl, you know it would crack. But look how well God sustains this. I'm pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. I cannot break this egg. It will help. I'm shaking it. I'm really, really, you see my face? I've had my little grandson try and try to leave my lead cheated. You can't do it. You, I challenge any of you big tough guys out there, one-handedly, two-handedly even, without, I don't know, just, just keeping it in the palm of your hand, cup your hands around it, squeeze double if you want, squeeze, push. You cannot break a, a raw egg in your, in your, in your hands. Bare hands. Don't play any tricks. This is a real egg. Cracked. All over my counter now, too. Jesus created that egg. It could have been a life of one of his little delicate animals. Don't you think there's a reason he kept that egg so strong on the outside? It's so delicate where it could still break. Life can be very fragile. There's a fine line you don't want to cross from good to evil. Maybe I'm kind of making that part something to think about. It's not biblical. I'm just using an example. Good and evil exists. The Word of God is very delicate. Handle it with care. Jesus loves you. He came to save the world. That's the reason he went to the cross. He suffered and died a horrific, evil, tragic death, beaten. So many times I'm, I feel so blessed that I can even scratch an itch. Thinking about Jesus, he couldn't even scratch an itch or stop the blood from dripping in his eyes and the thorns dug into his head. What Jesus went through for us because he loved so, so loved us. is so worth everything. He rose again from the dead. Three days later, he became perfect and whole. He was the Lamb of God that went to the cross, gave up his life because he was perfect. Only Jesus could have done that. For there is no other name given by men under heaven whereby we must be saved that can that could save us. That's Acts 4.12. Read Acts chapter 4. You see, they're talking about Jesus. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Let him take that yoke upon his shoulders and you accept his free gift of salvation. He paid a heavy price for you so that you could live. Why would you hold on to the demon spirits of this world, the God of this world, Satan, who's just tempting you with every pleasure all around you, trying to make you believe that everything is out there for you to love this world? There's nothing in this world worth loving when it comes to Jesus. There's nothing in of this world to love because everything in this world is temporary and it will all be burned up. One day, it will all be gone, but the love of Jesus will reign and live forever and ever. Won't you please accept him into your heart today as your Lord and Savior? Tomorrow truly could be too late. You may take your last breath, or Jesus Christ may come to rapture us. You could be stuck left here in the horrible days ahead. The war that's coming is real. The torture, the torment, even for those who finally believe in Jesus after the rapture, because it's not going to be easy to even see evidence of Jesus. You're going to have to just find a way to avoid whatever you can until you have to be tortured and murdered for the sake of Jesus if you're left behind. But if you don't, if you don't um, 
surrender to Jesus after the rapture in this in the seven in the time of the uh, the time that's ahead of us known as the time of Jacob's trouble the period of time after the rapture when you're left behind in all the evil you don't surrender to Jesus and you 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 fall for the lies of this world it's going to be all lies and evil and darkness if you're going to fall for what they're offering you to put a mark in your right hand or in your forehead that's your ticket to hell and you can't take it back and they're going to make you renounce the name of Jesus to reject him completely that's horrible don't ever do that Jesus loves you and he died to save you too and praise God he rose again three days later we are to go out into all the world and tell them what Jesus did so that others too may see the truth and come to the light. The beginning of wisdom begins with the, begins with the fear of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus is God. You need to fear him who can cast your body and your soul into hell for all of eternity for rejecting him as your savior. Don't fear man. All they can do is kill your body. But if you love Jesus, you'll be in his arms the minute you leave this life, this world and this life. But don't be left behind. Call on Jesus now before it's too late. Please surrender it all to him. And he will show you the way, the truth, and the life once you are born again in Christ. Please read the information in the description box below to understand what you need to say or understand about the Word of God to get you started with your new journey to heaven with Jesus. God bless you all in Jesus' holy name. Call on him. His yoke is much easier. God bless you.